I guess this this film, if nothing else, also gives this idea of bullies are bad. Bullies are bad, except for when you become the bully to yeah. to beat up on the bully. Like it's it's again, there there's so many contradictions within this story that I don't even understand what it's trying to say, and if it's it even cares. In on the subway train yeah. where Arthur is is riding home and. He has this laugh, like Jacqueline said in her synopsis up top, and he and it's just this this thing that he can't really control. It's not laughing because something's funny. He has a laugh, but then he also has this laugh where if he's panicking or if he's actually struggling with something, that's his response, which is obviously throwing people off left and right, including these Wall Street bro assholes on the subway that decide to, for no other reason than just to get some kicks on Friday night, beat him up and and mock him and bully him. And so watching that, we've seen so many coming of age films. We've seen so many action movies. We've seen so many dramas where we're we're not sure who we're rooting for. And then all of a sudden you see someone get bullied and you just want to be there in the room and say it's OK and put your arms around them and lift them back up. And we're naturally inclined to do that, even when it's Arthur Fleck. And we know what he could become watching this movie. But in that moment, you just you feel for him so much. And that feeling gets weaponized later in the movie, I think, in a very artistic way that it can be taken the wrong way for sure. But it also is back to Jacqueline's point, Robert, of when do you stop rooting for someone if they were bullied and that made them the bully? When do we stop pulling for them and when do we say, OK, well, no, now we need to <laughs> intervene with a Batman like superhero? That's in the sequel. But one thing about the bullies, <laughs> one thing about the bullies before Robert answers, who are these Wall Street bros who are also well versed with Stephen Sondheim? I would like to know. Who are mm. these people singing Stephen Sondheim on New York subways? <laughs> I can see that dude talking about sports scores. I can see that dude even rapping inappropriately to Kendrick Lamar lyrics. But Sondheim, mm. that was the choice. Hey, <laughs> cocaine is a hell of a drug, and it was everywhere on Wall Street and whatever Gotham's Wall Street is back in the 70s and 80s. Uh, but go sorry, ahead, Robert. Robert. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, no. I mean, uh, I, I think that for one, that's hysterical. But yeah, I mean, I think that just goes to show you like, that, you know, the kind of metaphor that they're trying to go for with the whole New York thing to begin with, uh, t you know, to begin with. Right. Like how um, how this Gotham City is kind of, you know, they filmed a lot of it in New York. It's supposed to be like a 1970s, 1980s New York vibe where the streets are full of trash, like the social services are starved out, you know. For like metal for mental health clinics and to just literal everything in the society just looking bad and entire communities just being displaced. This is like post capitalism, post stage capitalism, like at its finest. Meanwhile, you know, which is in real life, you know, in real life, over forty percent of wealth in this country is inherited from like generation to generation. Um, and we see a Thomas Wayne in here who is, you know. I don't know if necessarily self-made or, you know, necessarily inherited the same wealth, but we know Bruce Wayne inherits that health, that wealth eventually. But when, uh, but, but, you know, seeing like these wall street guys who actually work for the Wayne corporation, somebody who in this film, we see him multiple times go on the news and say, you know, people who aren't rich, people who, you know, do these kind of things are clowns to begin with. So he's already kind of, uh, he already kind of has like a down, looking opinion on people at the bottom anyway and then joker's kind of just looking up like i don't know i like you know like y'all already cut my medication you already cut my therapy like what am i supposed to do 